Welcome to Electro Online. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the pseudo range and how it's measured. Now, again, the pseudo range is a measured range and it's not necessarily the accurate distance between the satellites, the SVs, and the receiver, but it's an approximate distance and that's why it's called the pseudo range. It's not the, it's not the true range. We'll have to make some adjustments later in order to find the true range but at least we want to get close to the true range and that's called the pseudo range. So how is that measured? Well, you need at least four satellites and you're trying to measure the distance between the receiver and the four satellites and you want to make the measurement at the same time. So very close together in time. And so the definition for the pseudo range is equal to the speed of light times the time for the transmission to reach the receiver from the space vehicle. So take the speed of light, times the time that it takes for the signal to go from this satellite to here and this satellite to here and so forth, that will give you the pseudo range of the four satellite to receiver distances. For example, if the, uh, we take the speed of light to be 2.997 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, let's say times 70 milliseconds for the transmission to take place, that puts it at about 21,000 kilometers distance. So you can get reasonably close like that. So the general equation is that the pseudo range is equal to the speed of light times the difference in the time of the receiver and the space vehicle. Now, of course, we know we have clock errors. We have clock errors in the receivers and in the in the receiver, and we have clock errors in the clocks of the satellites. So, in order to make things a little bit easier, what we're going to do is realizing that all these measurements with the same clock error are made at the same time and they're therefore called pseudo ranges. So what do we mean by the same clock error? Well, in each case, in each calculation for the pseudo range of the four satellites, the clock error of the receiver is the same in all cases because you're taking the measurement at the same time. What about the difference in the clocks of the satellites? Well, we're going to assume that the SV clocks are all accurate and the same. Now, of course, we know that's not perfectly correct, there are going to be some differences, but those clocks on the satellites are much more accurate than the clocks on the receiver, and they reset on a periodic basis, or at least accounted for the difference between the clocks in the, in the satellites and the clocks in the, the atomic clock system on Earth. So we will know those very accurate, but for the time being, to take the pseudo-range measurements, we're going to assume that the SV clocks are all the same and are all accurate, and that's roughly correct. So the clock error, therefore, is in the clock in the quartz oscillator of the receiver because that one is not nearly as accurate as the clocks in the satellites. But we can say that the error is therefore the same for every pseudo-range measurement because they're done at the same time because it's always the clock of the single receiver that has that error. So we can say that the pseudo-ranges simply ignore the clock biases of the receiver or the SVs and the four pseudo ranges plus four SV positions from orbital parameters allows us to estimate the time error. So later on, we're going to show you how using four satellites and taking the four uh, pseudo ranges, we can actually calculate the clock error in the receiver or the clock error in the receiver and the satellites together. Well, we'll show you how to do that by doing some calculations, but at least at this point, by doing this, we can find the pseudo ranges to the four satellites it's a rough estimate of what the ranges are, and then we later on refine those ranges once we figure out the errors in the clock and we make all the atmospheric adjustments. So, we'll show you how to do that later, but at least now you know, hopefully, what the pseudo range is and how it's used and measured, at least to get, this, to get us an initial position for the receiver before we can zero in. That's part of the reason why sometimes when you use a GPS, you first get your position, which is way off from where you are, and then you see the, the target moving to where you currently are at because they start with some early measurements, pseudo ranges, and then they zero in after they kind of take care of the error. And that's essentially how we zero in with the GPS, going from a pseudo range position to the more or less accurate position. And that is how it's done. 